community, you have to worry about our, all these user pain points. Um, and so like I said, it's almost a whole year in the making. So how many of you guys deploy software um, at all? Build it or whatnot? Okay, so these are, these are my lessons um, from that whole year of work. Uh, make is amazingly awesome. I will preach make till like I die. Everyone that says, you grunt, no use gulp, no use, but I hit him in the head. <laughs> and I say, stop, go back to make. Download caches, making things work offline and be version locked and ready to go. Super awesome. Um, dependencies, the managing them sucks. I found that I had a lot of dependencies I no longer needed because I had moved on as the software evolved and I wasn't keeping up with trimming them back and stuff. Um, you know, version lock the ones you do, uh, but also dependencies are awesome because all that is code I didn't have to write. Woo -hoo. <laughs> um, and you know, you have to build. You know, how often when I first got started, people would be like, "I've pasted the install steps. It doesn't work for me." What do you mean it doesn't work for you? Well, because unless you're building over and over and over and over again every time you change the build system, you don't realize that you broke it. <laughs> Um, or a lot of more, more likely is people on different systems and different stuff. So you have to do this over and over and over again. Um, and ends up that you know if you learn enough life lessons, you're like, hey, continuous integration, Jenkins, automatic builds, these are a good thing and there's a reason that people do them. Even for open source software, uh, actually having continuous integration tests and builds are very powerful tools if you want people to use your stuff. So then you get the teasers, the, ooh, I like your project, this is super awesome, and I just want to submit a patch. I'm like, ooh, okay, cool, I've got a contributor, all right, now they're really going to start rolling in. And you work through them, and you work through them, and you work through them, and then you find that, you know, on the one hand, every little patch you can get helps, right? I, there was some guy, that, you know, at first it was like, oh, all he did was a little, little documentation correction update. But you kind of have to learn that, you know what, that's, an, that's a fix I didn't have to spend my time on. Right? So even the little small ones I learned to appreciate over time more and more as there were known issues of like this text didn't line up with that text on the account page. And it, I didn't care. Like that wasn't on the top of my list of crap to do tonight. And when someone fixed it, everyone got a nicer looking page and I didn't have to touch it. And you start to go, dude, you rock. That's awesome. You know, like, thank you, man. So one thing you have to learn to appreciate every little bit. And I think the thing you have to learn is to have no life. Um, the only way to keep people interested and, and working with you on stuff is to be as responsive as you can be. So and the people that who doesn't use IRC? Oh, I thought there were hands in there. Yeah, you have, you, have to, you have to use IRC. Like, you know, it, it is the best. Uh, it is, a, you know, everyone wants to resolve the problem of IRC. Again, it's like, make, stop. You know what, like, the problem's been solved. Everyone idles in IRC in a channel. Whenever someone pings you, you get a nice little highlight. You can see all the log. You can put it on a server and never never go offline. Um, and it helps you be amazingly responsive. Some dude jumps in and goes, I'm having an install problem. And I can go, what is it? And he gives you know, a little bit of an error. And the guy that I walk through and get him over that hurdle has now turned into a possible contributor. Whereas if I wasn't responsive, he'd have been like, I can't get installed. And he would have wandered off and done something else at this time. right? And you have to realize that when people are trying out your stuff uh, and they're asking questions in IRC, they're doing that on their time, just like when I work on Bookie, I'm doing it on my own time, right? So um, you have to help make sure that they don't feel like they're wasting their precious hours of their days as well. So these are some of the cool things in Bookie that would not happen without this, these contributors coming in. Uh, again, I mentioned the Firefox extension would not exist. There's an Android app because someone wanted to play with an API and learn Android, and they wrote an app, and it was like, holy crap, like, that wouldn't exist if it uh, wasn't for this kind of community building and stuff. Lots and lots of bugs got fixed, just straight from community people who got involved, and they wanted to, you know, they tried it out, something annoyed them, they get a patch, they may never have come back again, but you know what, the bug got fixed, so that's awesome. Um, and one thing I want to kind of point out as far as something I think that's been really beneficial, I rewrote the API in Bookie three times. Um, I would go to a conference and I'd go to some API talk about how to do a good API, and I'd get inspired and realize how utterly crap my API was, and I'd go back and rewrite it. Um, which on the one hand sucked, because rewriting code is bad, but it eventually got to a point where having an API was amazingly awesome, because the guy wanted to write an Android app, and I said, well, here's the docs for the API, and he wrote Android, and talked over the API to Bookie, you didn't have to worry about the back end of stuff. He didn't have to build a back end to store bookmarks <coughs> and search them and all that stuff. He got it for free. So for him, he wanted to play an Android. 
And by having an API, I let him do that. Um, there's a guy that wanted to learn Angular. So we started to build an AngularJS web front end to Bookie just using the API. And this was really beneficial in a few ways because now I've got someone interested and invested in Bookie because they're building something on top of it. Um, and it found a lot of bugs and little corner cases of things when they were trying to use it that I didn't <coughs> test for and I didn't know about. And so I will say, uh, you know, one thing I did to manage the site is I wrote a, a command line app that talks to the API for like deleting users and resetting accounts and retrying imports and stuff. And I will say, all tools of any, any, any sort should all have an API. Like they're just amazingly useful, awesome, and they're, I think they're community enabling uh, for people to get involved, maybe not work on Bookie, but maybe start to build a little periphery around it, you know, and that is just as valuable as getting, because if someone goes, oh, Bookie has an Android app, I will try it over another bookmark service because Bookie does have an Android app, then that's pulled in, you know, they've been sucked into the vortex um, that would not have existed before, so. So wait, so eventually you're like, hey man, I mean, look at all this crap that wouldn't happen without a community. So it's like, wait a minute, do I, do I see over yonder hill a, a community building around this tool I wrote? No way, like that's kind of crazy insanity are you speaking? And so then it happens, and I think every project hits this, and this was a, it's kind of a story time. Um, <laughs> someone forked one of my projects and worked on it and wrote a whole lot of awesome code. He took a library I wrote in Python, he made it work in Python 3, he um, updated some tests and stuff for it, and it was just freaking awesome. So, uh, story time, everyone go pull up on the magic carpet. There was one time this guy took my little project and he forked it off on GitHub. And GitHub, I hate you, because when someone forks your thing, they don't really tell you, you get a little number that increments. And unless you go follow them and track it and star it and watch it, you don't know that they did anything with it. So. This guy forked my library, six months later I realized he had, and he had done a lot of work over six months. Well, I had done a little bit of work over six months. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, this is awesome. I want to pull your changes back into my changes, except he didn't believe in make files, so he removed it. He didn't like my folder organization structure, so he moved all the files around. He had ported everything to be Python 3 to safe, which moved a lot of other stuff around. Well, I had my own set of diffs, and merging it in was a nightmare. It wasn't easy. And he, as far as he was concerned, he didn't care because he had the tool he wanted, right? He took my starting base, and this is, the, this is the joy and the curse of open source software, right? On the one hand, someone found my work valuable, they ran with it and did awesome stuff with it. Um, you're like, you know, yeah, like I did something that matters. On the other hand, you're like, now commit back to the community. And he was like, eh. I don't need to, like, that's a lot of work. I, don't wanna, I got what I need. So it came back on me to basically take a weekend and to sit down over a weekend and go commit by commit of his and resolve conflicts and merge it in and put my make file back in and to do this and to do that. And what was funny was that I had a couple of bug fixes that he didn't have since he had forked it off. So um, it took me a whole, I lost the whole weekend to get it back in. It was a lot of, like, and I mean, like, full eight hour day weekends, you know, a weekend there to get that back in. So, on the one hand, I was, and Craig can, can testify this, like, I was bummed. Like, I was like, you know, man, like, this is just so rough, because you're in a no-win situation. You want the code, but, I mean, that was hours and hours of work I was not planning on doing. Um, but, when I got it done, and he saw that I had bug fixes, he actually went through and was like, oh, okay, so I started to use mine, and then, we talked online a little bit, and I added him as a committer to the repository. It's like, hey, look, if you want to fix a bug or something, you have access. Like, go ahead. Like, I've seen your work. I can. Tr I trust that you, you know, know what you're doing. I've seen that you can run with this for six months on your own. And so now I've got a guy who's on the other side of the world, and I don't know what he does, but he hacks up my library once in a while, and we kind of try to work together. And it's tough, but by getting over the work and getting over the hurdle, I started to build, again, you start to get the community going, and there's, now there's two contributors, not just me, um, which is nice. So, at the end of the day, what you have to realize is like all this, all this stuff just turns into more and more and more work, right? And so one thing is kind of funny, because people are like, oh, Bookie, like that's a cute little open source project. What you don't realize is that Bookie is really a lot of stuff now. There's this is the actual commit history for Bookie back to 2011 here. And this is, oh look, I, I did a lot, I did a lot, and then like, oh, I kind of took some time off, and whatever, whatever. 
Well, then you realize, well, then there's a Firefox extension, and here's where I started it, and then did nothing, and then Matt took it up, and then we started to work on it together. And Bmutability, this was a library I wrote, because I was initially using a library that had no tests and was, it got me started, but it was awful, so I, of course, what do you do? You, you know, you open source, you just, like, write your own code, you fork, you fork it and run it, do whatever. So you can see, when I tried to line up, like, this 2013 timeline, so you can kind of see, like, you know, while things slowed down here, they picked up here. While they, you know, were slowed down here, I was working on the CLI when it was, you know, kind of consistent here. And then, you know, here in October, I was working on the Firefox extension and not much down here, you know. So, this little pet project, I'm going to do a bookmarking site. <laughs> I now have like a GitHub org and it's got, there's, this doesn't even include the Android app, the Angular app, um, and other things in the ecosystem. So it kind of like grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And so, um, if you go look at, you know, Bookie, you might go, hey, Rick has abandoned it for this month. So you realize, well, no, he was just working on a library that's a requirement for this, this app to live and exist for that, for that month. And, you know, you're kind of still active and all that. So, um, so eventually you kind of go, and there are many, many times in the years of this where I've been like, all right, why am I bothering with this? Like, maybe I should put this thing to bed. Maybe I should... Um, you know, it works, does what I needed to do, you know, why do I keep bothering with it? Um, and so, every time I get there, I start to realize, you know what, I'm, I'm proud of the work. It's not the most awesome project ever. The code is not the cleanest, most elegant, bug-free code ever. But you know what, I've got a, you know, I've got a lot of blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> in, in, the, in this code. So, you know, and, and I do, I, I still use it to this day. And whenever someone comes up and uses it, there's a little hint of, you know, a little pride that, you know, yeah, someone else finds my thing interesting. Uh, isn't that kind of cool validation? Um, the other thing is that, you know what, a lot of times people, I, I do, you know, I'm trying to do some interviewing, and you ask people, like, hey, you know, do you guys do test, uh, testing with your code at work? No, I mean, I've always wanted to, but work doesn't really believe in setting aside the time for that, you know. It's like, okay, well, do you guys do continuous integration? Do you do... Um, Documentation for your code. Well, no, you know, work doesn't. The work doesn't let us do that, or whatever. <laughs> well, I mean, having an open source project means that it's my way. It has a make file. It has tests. The tests pass. You know what? The JavaScript library. So it's like, you know what? I wanted to code. I wanted to write code at some point in my life that had tests. That you know, ran in CI. That at one time I wanted to use jQuery and Backbone, and then I went, wait, 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 wait. No, this sucks. I'm going to go learn.